Hi, I'm Gabriel Quack. Join me as I share my football journey. I started at a very young age. My father played a huge influence. I think he was the one who got me started into the sports. He himself is a sports person, big football fan, Arsenal fan. And I think I always watch this match with him. And from there, there was my, where my interest grew, fell in love with the sport. And you know, slowly as I grew older, tried the game, went to parks, have a kick about. And I think that's how it grew on me. I, was, I think I was lucky to be part of the very successful era in Singapore football, you know, when it was still known as the Tiger Cup, you know, watching in the old Kalang Stadium. Uh, I think it was fantastic, 60,000 fans. So, you know, players I really like back then, you have Indra, you know, we have the foreign talents back then like Agu and all. So I think that was really special. You know, I, I really like Indra and back then Amri, Sharil, they were still young. We all know Alam Shah period, we have Ridwan on the flanks. So I think that was a that was a great period for Singapore football. At that period, I was really drafted into the NFA 15. So they were actually training, most of them were in the Young Lions squad back then. So they're always training nearby, you know, under Reddy at Jalan Besar Stadium. I was at Christchurch just next door. So time to time, you will bump into them and it feels like, oh, you meet your idols, like somebody you, you see from afar at the pitch. Now you are, you know, crossing paths, at times training together after. So I think uh, it was like, you know, the Arsenal stars are like far away, but these are all, oh, we are just, you know, together. So I think uh, it kind of like give you that motivation. Probably you call it like, probably you want to be like them to play, you know, to be playing in front of 60,000 fans one day. Because I was one of those 60,000 queuing up for tickets. So actually I have to think, thank uh, my youth coach back then, Kadeya, yeah. yeah. I think he was the one who sort of convinced them that come, let's give this boy a chance to give it a shot. Because I think they were like any typical, you know, Chinese parents back then who wasn't really supportive. You know, think, uh, they wanted me to put studies more as a priority. But I think Kade saw a talent in me, he saw potential and he kind of convinced them that, okay, he assured them that he will try to keep me on track, you know, strike a balance. So he really went to great extent off the pitch, like, you know, catering tuition class, making sure we are not skipping school kind of thing. And in fact, a lot of my school meetings with parents when I, I you know, there were like negative things, like they called in the teachers, the parents. He, uh, my mom turned out with my coach. So they thought he was my dad and kind of thing. So I think they, they saw this, they saw he was really genuine, you know, the commitment from him. And I think they were won over by Kade. So I think slowly, slowly they, they start to support me. And I think honestly, the parents and the family support was very important for me in my growth because, you know, as a young boy, you wouldn't want to be like playing football, but at the back, like, you need to do things behind their back. So slowly when they, you know, they sent me to training, prepare food, these kind of little, little things was what that really kept me going and gave me that extra thing. So I, I, I think that really parent support is really very important. Of course, being a minority is, it always puts me in the spotlight, I'm sure. And initially when I first started out, of course it wasn't easy, you know. Uh, at times being the outcast, having certain issues to fit in, but I felt that I didn't take too long to, you know, uh, overcome this barrier, what you call it, kind of thing, because, you know, coming out from the minority in the football scene and back then my parents wasn't very supportive kind of thing. So, you know, it, was, it wasn't easy. And being in the under-15 team as well, uh, there wasn't much Chinese football as well. I was probably one of the only two or three. So, of course, when you, when you go to trainings and all, naturally they will speak in their language. So, uh, I, I try to fit in, like, you know, trying to engage with them, you know, to blend in because I think this is the minimum I should do, you know, try to adapt. So I try to pick up the language, you know, try to head out for meals after training, you know, just to have that bond, to be accepted in a way because, yeah, I think, so I think initially it was not easy, but, you know, as time goes by, I felt that I won them over with my ability, you know, to show them that, you know, yeah, kind of thing. And yeah, I think right now, I'm just glad and happy that, you know, probably I'm one of the 
face or ambassador or you know hopefully I can be an inspiration to the fellow race if they want to take up to the sports. In my early stage of my career, especially once we move on from Young Lions, slowly, slowly towards the Lions Show period, I think it was not easy when there was more fans and you know started really playing more professional. I think there are many things, you know, fans were hurling abuse, kind of thing like, oh, uh, when, when you sometimes when I get the ball and they were like, hey, just don't lose the ball, we'll do, hey, uh, oh, he's doing it again, kind of thing. Then sometimes, you can't help it when you read the newspaper. I think this particular comment, like flattering to deceive kind of thing, it, it wasn't nice, but you know, back then I was still young, you know, so definitely I was kind of affected kind of thing. But I think now looking back, I thank, this, I thank those moments because it really made me grow and I think it shaped me up to become a tougher person. It happened to be that I knew her in 2008, it was the year I started as well. So I think she watched me grow because that was how I, I went after her as well, you know, as a young boy. I think that was the year where I was caught up to the training with the Brazil team. So that was one of our uh, opening exchange topic like you know trying to show off to her like hey look uh, I was training with Ronaldinho you know I, I, you know kind of thing like when I was young like try to impress so I think that was how I won a date with her kind of thing and you know since then that's how we grew in uh, 2008 so she really started with me since day one she saw my rise my fall when I went to NS I couldn't play my agony when I cried when I was in Thailand when I was lunch all this so she oversees everything and you know I'm just glad that she was there with me since day one. She knew how is it like being a wife of a footballer. Uh, it wasn't easy, the sacrifices. And uh, in fact, she was very supportive when the offer from Thailand came. She told me just go for it. She knew how important it was for my career, like what could, how it could propel me further. And honestly, I was really touched. Like she, I remember her words was go, but when you go, make sure that, you know, make sure like you really make, make it there. So I knew that when I went there, there was no room for failure. I had to really, you know, make her proud, like her sacrifices back home with the kids. When I went there, it was totally hands off kind of thing. So, you know, I, I think that all my, whatever success I have today, it's due to my wife. My time in Thailand was with Navy was, honestly, it was fantastic. I think it was another important year for me at a very important stage of my career at 28. Uh, going there alone, it was like stepping out of my comfort zone, my shadows, you know. Uh, new environment all by myself to learn and grow, you know, not knowing anybody, a new language, new culture, which I think I adapted well. Uh, it gives me a lot of time to myself to think and reflect also because without my family by my side, uh, going there, not knowing what to expect. And I think that was one of the very important year for me because it really shaped me up also uh, mentally and I had a lot of self-reflection to do so I think which when I came back now you know I, I'm, I'm happy that what I tried to set during that period it, it kind of is panning out nicely Till date many people speak about 2018 when I was in Thailand like they say that was the turning point in the year but I felt I, I do agree to a certain extent but I felt that 2019 was also another important year I felt it was in fact the year for me because in 2018, when I went over, yeah, you know, I was living into a better league, probably the best league in Southeast Asia. You know, there was a lot of high media attention. Everyone was curious, like, how would Gabe do there? So when I went there, of course, the games are not really shown. You can watch, but it's not easy. And I think people in Singapore could only know about me via news and all. So even if I played badly, nobody would know. So of course, when I come back, naturally, people will be thinking like, how has he done there? How has he progressed? So I felt that I want to make sure that whatever I did in 2018, all the good work I've done there is not going to waste. So 2019 was a difficult year because you know of what we went through financially with Warriors. So I thought to myself, do I really want to make 2018 or whatever I set for myself go to waste? Uh, it was not easy, you know, playing in a team that was many players were not motivated. You know, coming to training was like a drag, dragging our, ourselves. Uh, I, I joined the team, we were not doing well, we lost the first seven games and I think we had a new coach coming in, spoke to me, 
you know, wanted to meet with a leader, so I was appointed captain. You know, I appreciate what the coach has done, the boss, you know, I had their full faith and support. So I think, you know, making me the leader of the team, you know, it was like giving me more, more responsibility and, uh, you know, I had to step up and the room to grow was, I had to grow quickly to lead this team and I think that was where I, tr I thrive. Uh, I, I really do enjoy the pressure, like I'm willing to take the blame if the teams don't do well and all because uh, I want the, the whole team to, to function and, you know, like if I want to be the leading player, the top player, I think, you know, all this comes with the pressure and all, like you see all top players in the team like Cristiano, Messi, you know, you know, when, when, when they do well, the teams do well. So, I, you know, I, I kind of want to enjoy my football, you know, like this, this was what I told myself after I came back in Thailand. I say, come these seven years, let me just enjoy. I want to be, I want to do something, create a legacy for myself. And, you know, this is what I want, what I want to achieve. Like, I want to bring the team to success. And yeah, so I'm just happy also this year that, you know, I want something for myself, some individual honours, which I think is important for, for me. Of course, winning the Player of the Year this year, it's a really dream come true. It was my dream when I first started. I think it has not been an easy journey. Uh, many sacrifices uh, and all. It's a lonely job, like what I say. As it, all the more lonely, especially if you want to reach the top, because sometimes you have to do more than others without people seeing it. And uh, I think mine is a very powerful tool. So, you know, looking to my heroes like Muhammad Ali, Cristiano, you know, especially tennis player which I watch. I think all these players, you look at the top tennis player like Nadal, Djokovic, Federer, uh, I think they have this winning mentality that really push them beyond their boundaries, which is my main takeaway for the last couple of years, which why I think many people feel that what's the difference, uh, what's the difference between the gate five years ago and now? I think this, I kind of adopt their winning mentality and I think back then, probably I had some mental block, like, you know, I went into the game, to the boxing ring, not wanting to lose rather than to win. Uh, you know, in football terms, it's like I went into the pitch, you know, not, not that I want to play well, but I was just hoping not to have a bad game. So I think the last two years, you know, uh, I adopt their kind of mentality, like, you know, we are a champion. Uh, for example, in a tennis match, in a grand slam, in a five setter, it's tough to beat this tough player in a five setter because they could easily come back from two sets down. So I liken myself to them where, you know, it's all about the mind, the mentality. And I think this is something that I've been lacking the, in the early stage of my career. So, well, I'm glad that when I push myself, it kind of go beyond whatever boundaries that I have, my mentality. And I think this has really helped me out my game and, you know, uh, attain the success I have today. So it's really a dream come true. And I think, Winning the play of the year is putting myself in the history books which nobody can take away from me. So I think, uh, of course, the success doesn't end here. In fact, work has just started.